分享英文表达，去聊各国文化。欢迎收看酷聊,聊，一聊一聊，聊一聊。欢迎收看《酷聊医疗之聊世界》。我们今天节目这嘉宾呢，是一个非常非常特别的人。他呢，他形象特别，呃，故事特别。他的名字也是非常非常特别。他叫做什么呢？他叫梅长苏。那今天我们一起来和我们的这位郡主来聊一聊。好，有请我的好朋友 Ken。Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Finally, finally, after all this episode, I I finally got you in my show.、Uh, I made it.、Uh, have you ever watched our show? I have. I've seen a couple episodes. How do you like it? I like it a lot. So you know how we do this show, all the conversation and、uh, the games. I, I'm I don't know about games, but I am familiar with the overall platform. Okay,、though. I still remember.、Um, I think it's about three years ago when we drove to Hebei.、Mm-hmm. You told me about how you became a businessman in IT business. How you、uh, your teenager time and your school year? Those stories still fascinating me today. So、uh, today in the show, I would like to talk to you more in detail about the stories again. Sure. All right. Okay. But before we do anything else, we have a grand challenge section. Okay. As you can see, we have a wheel of luck. Okay. And、uh, in this wheel, we have eight challenges.、Uh, what we do later is you are going to roll this wheel,、okay. and the Point stay、uh, stop at whichever challenge you will, you will need to do that challenge. Okay. If you can win. Okay. We're going to give this、uh, Statue of Liberty out to one of our lucky audience. Okay. So、uh, that will be sent out by you. All right. All right. Sounds good. You're ready. I'm ready. Let's do it.、Well, let's do it. Oh. Mm-hmm. So we still don't know which one. Blind drawing. Okay, blind drawing. Blind drawing. Oh, this I like this one. This is my favorite.、Uh, okay. Anyways, blind drawing. So what we do,、uh, we will have、um, an eye blind that will cover your eyes. So you need to tell me.、Uh, there will be a whiteboard here. Okay. So you need to tell me what you are going to draw. Okay. And、uh, then you will stand over there and、uh, you wear the eye blind. You walk to the whiteboard and draw. Okay. Let's see how, what you draw. Come out will be the same as what you told us. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, Ken.、Uh, first of all, I'll give you a toy. Okay.、Uh, eye cover. Uh, so the trick is in, is in this game, in this challenge, you are going to wear this and draw a picture. But first of all, you got to tell me what you are going to draw. Okay, okay, I'm gonna draw a duck. A duck. A duck. Okay, so、uh, it's not too hard to draw a duck, but it's a different story when you wear this. So、uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Let me let me help you. Okay. Okay, well, let's see. Now this is actually much harder than I expected here. <laughs> okay, so far we don't see a duck. Duck? Does it look like a duck? Uh, let's take a look together. Hey, that's not too bad. All right. That's not. That's actually came out a lot better than I expected. <laughs> 小道，你觉得怎么样？像像鸭子吗？小哈。Does it look a little like Daffy Duck? Daffy Duck. Uh, uh I would say yes. Okay, let me show you what I was going to, going for. Okay. Okay. So we'll put it in the to context. Let's match. Okay, let's put it in context here. <laughs> So we have his little head. Here's his eyes.、Mm-hmm. Put a little, a couple things coming up.、Right. We'll give him a beak and a little mouth. His tongue coming out so he can talk. His little nose there. Okay. Oh. Oh, maybe a neck. Okay. And his body. That's a nice body. 
There's her duck. Oh yeah. Give him a wing. Mm -hmm. you, you know what? Before you draw this, I really didn't see, uh, realize this is a duck. But comparing two of the pictures, they are, I would say, ninety percent exact the same. Jiao Dao, how do you think? They're pretty close. 两幅画的话，之前我觉得不太像，就我没想到是鸭子，但是两幅比比的话，还挺像鸭子的。So I thank you just a passing challenge. Hey, good for you. All right, so somebody's gonna get the prize. Yeah, now let's come to the lucky draw part. Okay, I would say、uh, congratulations for the lucky、uh, for the grand challenge. So now let's come to our lucky pal. Okay.、Uh, as you can see. Later,、uh, what you need to do is you need to tell tell us、uh, go or start and stop.、Okay. We'll have a, a row of name there, and then when you say go or start, the name will be rolling. When you say stop, and the two, today will be two lucky audiences. Okay. The two who we stop at will be the lucky audience, and we will send each of them one of the statue. Awesome. Okay. So、uh, ready? Ready and go. And stop. Okay, it's a、uh, 公众号朋友郑小薇 Carol， 还有微博朋友 L 橘子树，恭喜两位。And thank you, Ken, for bringing bringing them the good luck. I'm glad somebody won. All right. Um, how we do this today? Uh, let's do this. Okay. Uh, we will talk about you, and uh. From the year you were born, and、uh, about your personal story and how America has changed by decades. Okay. Okay. When, when were you born? Which year? I was born in 1969. 1969. That's an important big year. That is a big year. That's whenever、uh, we'd sent people to the moon.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, the Vietnam War was in full swing and starting to become.、Uh, A little unpopular amongst、right. the people, and、uh, rock and roll was really kicking off.、Um, there was the、uh, Woodstock,、mm -hmm. which That's is famous music festival. Famous music festival, and of course, I was born. And you were born in which state? I was actually born in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. But I、uh, was before I was even one. I was moved to New Mexico, so I grew up my entire life in New Mexico. Oklahoma is more in the middle. Yeah, yeah, besides Georgia.、North. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. It's been too long because I spent almost all my life in New Mexico. It doesn't matter. Mexico is your New Mexico is your hometown. That's true.、Uh, uh, my hometown is actually Truth or Consequences. No、uh, joke. It's named Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Back in the state of New Mexico, my home state, my cameraman tells me my hat is causing a shade, so you should be able to see. Now I'm all squinty because of the sun, but I'm going to take you around the state, show you my hometown of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Okay, 真理和后果 truth and consequences. Yep. Is that a big town or what kind of place is that? No, it's a very small town. It's、uh, there's just a few thousand people that live there,、mm -hmm. um, very spread out. So there's,、uh, yeah, it's a real small community.、Uh, were you the only child? No, actually, I come from a very large family. I have lots of brothers and sisters. So、mm -hmm. uh, I'm the eldest son, though. So okay, you are the da ga ga. I'm da ga ga. Yes, so 1969, as you said, we have the Woodstock Music Festival,、uh, rock and roll.、Mm. Uh, are you into rock and roll? I am. I like all kinds of music. Actually, I like everything. Okay, because I know you. You come from the country,、uh, like the West in the West,、mm -hmm. and you told me before you are a redneck. I'm a redneck. Yeah. yeah. So between、uh, as a redneck between rock and roll and country, which one you like better? <sighs> Oh, that's a really tough yeah. question. Yeah. That's a really tough question.、Um, I guess it just depends on the mood because you can't beat rock when you're in the gym or exercising、yeah. or on a long hike. But, but you can't beat country in the car. <laughs> but just driving around, there's nothing that beats country in the car.、Yeah. Yes, exactly. In the pickup truck, from where I'm from.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so、uh, in the '60s, you were you were just born the very last year. Right. Now、uh, let's move to the '70s. Okay. So in the '70s, you were a little boy. Uh, when did you go to school? I went to school when I was about six years old. That's the same about, as as here. We、mm -hmm. we we went to school in the same age, at the same age.、Uh, were you a good student? I was not a good student. I was a terrible student. I was a student at the back of the class that ate the glue 
And uh, I had dif- I, one of the most difficult tasks that I remember learning was tying my own shoes. By the time I hit school, I still even couldn't tie my shoes at that okay. point. I, could, I couldn't. I, I was embarrassing. But I found that to be a particularly hard task as a young child. How many courses do you have when you're in the first year? Um, you know, I don't remember that much about school because I really just didn't care. I know that uh, we had like an English class and maybe a little mathematics or uh, something like that and some civics right. classes or art or something like that. Um, but from, you know, my earliest memories, basically, as soon as I got home, I was wanting to get out of school so I could go out into the desert and hunt. And that's going to hunt there in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time running around in the desert. As soon as I got out of school, that's what I was mostly doing. Okay. When will the school day finish every day normally? Um, about three o'clock. Three o'clock. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you said the truth and the consequences is a small place. Mm. And how did you go to school back then? Did you ride a horse or? No, we didn't ride a horse. I didn't ride a horse personally. I actually rode a bus, but I did know a few kids who lived far enough out in the country that they rode a horse to their bus stop. And then they got on the bus and rode another hour to end the cool. school. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Is horse, I mean, is horse allowed in, in the campus? Can they ride inside the campus? Um, well, I, I, sure, I think a horse would probably be allowed, but where you were going to put it all day long, you uh, couldn't really leave it just tied up and sitting like a car. It as long to, as it doesn't poop. So, well, you know, they're going to poop too. So I wouldn't think too many people actually ride their horse all the way to school. That would not be probably kosher. That wouldn't be the best thing for your horse. Okay. Uh, and were there many students in 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 the school in your same grade? Um, no, there wasn't. Maybe a hundred or so. Mm-hmm. Were there any Chinese? No, <laughs> no, there was no Chinese. Okay, now I have an interesting question. What did you know about Chinese uh, when you were like in your? Uh, let's say middle school. You know, I'm not going to say this of all the people that were around me because Uh maybe I was just less educated than most, but I would say for the most part, you know, like especially in middle school, I didn't even know there was a place per se called China. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I knew there was a China, I associated it with Asia. I thought there was basically a place called Asia, which mm-hmm. was maybe a country. And then maybe China was a state in it and Japan was a state in it. That was kind yeah. of my early understanding. Just like America, you have those, all those states. Right, right. So that was kind of my understanding at that time. So mm-hmm. I didn't know very much. I really knew nothing about it, to be honest with you. So it was very preliminary. And what I did know was, well, obviously, wrong okay when was the first time you have ever heard of, about or you have a uh, relatively uh, detailed idea of, uh, I mean understanding about China um, as I got older um, you know we learned that uh, there was a place called China you mm-hmm. know and that it was closed off from the United States um, from the Cultural Revolution with Mao mm-hmm. and that was really all I knew that's we were taught it was closed off. So in my mind, I translated closed off to mean basically it was like a prison of some sorts, maybe like you'd see in uh, um, uh, Australia, Mm -hmm. whenever they said it was closed off and the rest of the world didn't. They sent bad bad people there. Yeah, maybe there was just a bunch of bad people there. I knew there was a great wall of China. I thought maybe there was like guys walking around the wall with guns to keep China closed off from the West. That would take a lot of people standing there. It would, but I I understood that the wall was pretty big. Yeah. So, but I I didn't know enough to actually have an educated opinion. My opinion was, was very, very wrong for most of my life, to be honest with you. Okay, let's come back to your school school time again. Mm-hmm. Um, were there any school bully uh, in your campus? Yeah, there was there was a few school bullies because redneck, uh, cowboy, and the West. Is that make made me naturally thinking like big guys will bully some small guys. Yeah, that that wasn't uncommon. Um, there was a lot of school bullying whenever I was in school. It wasn't. Um, I'm not sure that I would think it is quite as bad as like mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people make it out to be, which could just be my redneck side. Is mm-hmm. like, you know, boys will be boys, and that um, you know, people are going to pick on other people. But everybody kind of goes through it at one time or another. You're going to yeah. do something stupid, or you're going to be picked on for one reason or another. Yeah, teenage year homo problems. Right. I was as a very young child. I was very effeminate, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very skinny. I had several older sisters. 
Um, so, yes, I was. I know it's hard to believe, but I was right. actually very skinny, a little kid. Yeah. Um, and my voice was very high. And so because of that, I got picked on a lot for being girly or sissy, you know, mm. um, whenever I was young. That's really hard to imagine. Um, well, and then I hit my teenage years and boom, I grew very tall very quickly uh -huh. and uh, started feeling out. And then obviously I got picked on a lot less. Give me a recipe that may help me later. Um, beef, eat lots of uh, tacos, burritos, okay. and beef. Okay, that'll be, that'll be what I'm going to eat now from now on. Okay. It won't work. It's too late. It might be too late. I don't know. You could try. Start eating a lot of good New Mexican beef. We'll see. Okay, yeah. I'll try that. Uh, you said the school time uh, will finish after three, mm -hmm. and you'll go hunting. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Um, you know, the... Uh, there was seasons, so you know there you could hunt dove and quail, and mm -hmm. you know even there was even a deer season. But uh, a lot of times there was nothing in season, so mm -hmm. I just go out and would hunt rabbits or um, hunt um, even things like squirrels or even uh, mm -hmm. lizards sometimes just to find something to shoot at. I guess so. Yeah, I spent a lot of time hunting and shooting. Were the lizard big? Um, no, actually, some of them were pretty big, but most of them were you know about less than, than the length of your hand. <laughs> so you had a gun? I did. I did. I think I got my first gun when I was about seven years old, and it was a 22 rifle. Uh -huh. um, and um, then as I got older, I started collecting more guns and got pretty, pretty efficient with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I as, like the word efficient. <laughs> as time went by, to be honest with you, I actually got good enough that uh, I started to find it boring after a mm -hmm. while. So I took up archery and started hunting with a bow. Yeah. 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 I, I, I heard that you were a good shooter. Pretty good. So you hunt with guns and uh, arteries. Mm -hmm. were, were there a requirement based on age, like how old? After how old uh, you reach a certain year, a certain age, and then you can have a, a gun license? Well, guns aren't really regulated, especially whenever I was that young. Right. They had a card that you had to get for if you wanted a deer license. The, most of the time, the way licensing is was done not was not based on the gun, but the, by the animal you were hunting. Mm -hmm. And before you were allowed to hunt deer, you actually had to take what they called a hunter safety course. Okay. And it was just the course that basically taught you not to point your gun at people, and whenever you were walking, to make sure your gun was pointed down. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things that they taught is that there's no such thing as an unloaded gun. Mm -hmm. That anytime you see a gun, you should treat it like it's loaded, because yeah. a lot of people are actually injured or killed by accidentally getting shot with a gun they thought was unloaded. Mm -hmm. So they think it's unloaded, they look down the barrel and shoot themselves but or something. One bullet still left inside. Uh, right. So the thing is, is rather than um, worry about it. Just make sure you always think the gun is loaded. Always treat it like it's right. loaded, you know. Um, but uh, most of the time, I guess it's basically was based on uh, weight mm -hmm. because um, a heavier gun has more of a kick to it. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a small kid, you can't carry a heavier gun. But as you get bigger and bigger, you're able to handle larger and larger guns. So you have different uh, diameter of the bullet. All right, yeah, that yeah. Okay, that's so, the first time. Yeah. And the different sizes of bullets have different amount of gunpowder in it, mm -hmm. which, you know, causes more of a kick. Yeah. What kind of gun you have? There? I mean, your first gun. My first gun was a 22 rifle. 22, uh, like... So, a 22, yeah, the rifle shell is about thick? that long, and but the, the, the bullet itself is very, very small. Yeah, it's very small. And what's your first hunt? Do, do you still remember? Oh, still remember? Oh, it's probably for rabbits or something. It was my first hunt. Hmm. Okay. What is the largest size animal you have ever hunted? No, the largest size animal I've ever hunted and the largest size animal I ever got were two different things. Uh -huh. Because I have been elk hunting, but Let's I've never actually both of them. got an elk. So I guess the biggest thing that I've hunted is probably a deer. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had hunted elk and things like that, but I never got one. Elk? What is elk? Um, it's similar to a deer, just much, much larger. <laughs> okay. So they must run really fast. Um, they could run pretty quick, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but they're they're also very sketchy animals, and they've got good vision and good hearing, good smell. Right, that's how they survive. And so, yeah, exactly. So they they keep a pretty good distance, so they're not easy to sneak up on. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so that's about true. In the seventies, in the states, in the whole country, were there anything that still uh, you still remember? <sighs> Some big events. 
at that time, not really particularly any big events. Most of what I remember is just because I was from such a small town, it's just growing up in a small town. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not just really having much of a connection with the outside world at all. In fact, at that time, there was only really three TV channels that mm -hmm. existed. And out of those, I only got one consistently. And CCTV One is not one of them. No, it was not. No, it was just a Channel 13 out of Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't a very good television station it was very broke up and we could barely see it you know using a big antenna right and uh so i didn't really have a whole lot of communication with the outside world growing up especially in the 70s really almost none in the 70s so you were time or school hunting hunting school or at home well yeah and actually if i was to be honest in the 70s it was um hunting sitting at school thinking about hunting okay hunting and then to sleep <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so, so yeah. there's a hunting age. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you said about the three TV channels. Can you tell me more about uh, what, what what's the difference between the three of them? There wasn't a whole lot of difference at the uh -huh. time. It was ABC, NBC, and CBS. Okay. Um, and at that time, there wasn't a whole lot of difference. They had, all of them at the same time had the news come on, the nightly news. Okay. And then all of them about the same time would have like some sort of drama come mm -hmm. on that was usually a crime drama of some sort. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then they would have a maybe a talk show like this late in the evening, and that was who, the, who was your favorite movie star or uh, talk show host back then in the in the seventies? Ah, uh, well. In the 70s, or probably, I didn't watch a lot of it, but getting towards the late 70s, early 80s was probably Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Yeah, Johnny Carson was the guy back then. When did David Letterman start to got his fame? David Letterman started in, uh, I believe, the late 80s, early 90s. He used to be a weatherman. Did he really? Uh, I did not know that, no. I watched a show between him and George Clooney, uh -huh. and they talk about uh, David Letterman, Letterman uh -huh. and George Clooney's father. They used to work together as a weatherman. Wow, I did not know that. No, um, I, I, he was excellent, though, you know, as a, a night host, I really enjoyed mm -hmm. him. Yeah, have a long career. Yeah, yeah, he had a long career. How about in the business world? Is there any big events happening in the 70s? You know, one of the things I remember being a real concern, my uh, family's a long line of mechanics. We had a mechanic shop, worked mm -hmm. on boats and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I remember the fuel crisis being like really, really a concern for a long time. I mean, gas. Yeah, okay. gas, because uh, at that time we were having trouble, I guess, with the I Iran situation. Right. And um, that was about the time they were starting to take hostages and they collapsed mm -hmm. um, and for a short time. And there was some fuel embargo issues and things like that. And because of that, um, I remember my parents were really stressed all the time about getting gasoline. So I know in the in from my point of view, as far as what was happening in the outside world, it was really, are we going to get enough gas into mm -hmm. you know to keep our cars running? Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't remember much else besides that going on in you know my little town. I watched a documentary this year. The name is uh, Pump, and mm -hmm. it's talk about during I think that's during that time of uh, period of time. People queue for queue like a waiting a long queue for gas. Yeah, there was some queues for lines for gas at that time. In my town, we didn't really have that because there wasn't that many cars to begin with, even. Mm -hmm. So even if you ever lined everybody up in my town for gasoline at that time, it wouldn't have been a very long line, probably. Do you also use gas to cook? Um, well, that we use propane, natural gas, so uh -huh. it was a little different. It wasn't like gasoline. Right. Um, and I don't remember that being like as big a problem, but mm -hmm. at that time, of course, my age, the main thing I was thinking about was cars. <laughs> okay. Who did you admire in the 70s? People changed their role model from different, I mean, from time to time. Mm. Different age, uh, different phase of your life, you admire different people. Who did you admire in the 70s? Well, you know, I was a, a really skinny little kid. Right. And uh, that was kind of the time that the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was kind of coming onto the scene, first yeah. coming onto the scene. Um, and uh, a lot of those kind of guys, uh, Van Damme mm -hmm. um, was coming on. And uh, that, you know, really captured my imagination. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, Conan the Barbarian mm -hmm. and things like that I thought was you know, really exciting. So, you know, those action hero kind of guys. How about some of those um, Western movies? 
Um, well, McDonald's shooters. Yeah, Clint Eastwood, of course. Yeah. Uh, anything Clint Eastwood did, I was certainly into. Um, oh, well, back then it's already a color movie, not black and white movie. Well, at that time it was actually just changing between the two. In the 70s. Yeah, yeah. So I remember as a kid we had a black and white. Most of what we had was black and white. Right. But I remember it going to color and I remember getting my first color television set mm. and you know it was a very exciting uh, day. How much was that? Uh, oh, who knows. I had no idea what money was then. Um, so it, and Lucky it wasn't age. very big. It wasn't very big at all. Um, so yeah, it was like this big sitting in the middle of our living room and everybody is crammed around it. Yeah, I come from a small village. I remember when my home bought the first TV set in the, in the village, mm. almost the whole village, the, all the kids come to my home to watch TV. And uh, in, the, in the summer, uh, there is a small store. They put TV out and they have a, not a DVD, but a cassette player. Mm. And every evening they play uh, two episodes of a TV soap opera. Mm -hmm. And uh, in front of their yard, the, the yard was packed. The kids just go nuts there. Yeah, it was like that at our house whenever I was little. Is just my brothers and sisters right. and everything just crammed around the television watching it. It was very, very exciting. That was before they had even like VCRs or anything. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't any tapes at that time. You had to catch it the first time. So, you know, everybody set their watches to make sure they were going to be watching whatever show it was. Right. On Monday night at 7 o'clock, you had to be in front of the TV. I remember you know? all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite TV show? Back at that that time, um, maybe Starsky and Hutch was pretty cool. What kind of show is that? Um, it was about two detectives, um, and they drove an old sports car. Most mm -hmm. of the shows that I liked revolved around two guys doing something stupid. Dukes of Hazard was another one that, uh, you know, they Cops had. Cops driving sports cars. Yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. The Cops driving sports cars or bad guys driving sports yeah. cars or cops and bad guys driving sports cars. So okay, I was really into sports cars. Okay, now let's come to the 80s. Okay. Uh, in 80s, you were, you know, early 80s, you were 12. Teenager years. Right. Uh, tell me more about the teenager years. So we're getting uh, cassette tapes are coming out at that time. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty exciting. Walkmans, you could actually put it on your ears and walk around right. and listen to music. That was, you know, mind-boggling, changing experience. They what was your favorite a, brand for Walkman? Sony. So. Yeah, Sony was the, the brand that you had to have. That was the, the cutting edge was Sony. So Japanese people does not just only did not only do well in the car business, also in the Walkman business. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely in the in the music business for Good sure. For and yeah, they were killing it back then at that time. We everybody was sure that Japan was gonna take over the United States. At that time, there mm -hmm. was a big panic about it because, uh, you know, Toyota was coming on, Honda yeah. and all those things. And before, it was just General Motors and they had the best cars, period. Mm -hmm. And then when Honda came on, you know, Honda's cars were fantastic, yeah. especially at that time. American car quality had really, really dropped. So we had gone through this, you know, era where Chevrolets and Fords were just amazing, amazing cars. And then whenever fuel became an issue, they started putting out um, cars with not as much power, with lighter bodies, so yeah. they could go further. But the problem is, whenever they started doing that, they didn't really seem to care about the craftsmanship that mm. went into it as much either. And whenever that started dropping, that just left a big hole there that the uh, Japanese jumped in and They're filled. Just taking the yeah, position. yeah, they just jumped in. They had the light cars already. They had the smaller engines, but. The craftsmanship was there okay. that really started to become lacking in the United States. All right. We all know that Japanese cars, they consume less gas. Mm. But what exactly is the, the difference is between American uh, U.S. made car and uh, Japanese cars, the consumption of uh, gas? At that time, you know, it was pretty close to the same. Mm -hmm. But what was the difference is that um, American cars had a tendency to break down much easier and fall apart, literally like the plastic and the dash and stuff. It was just going from the metal and mm -hmm. wood to plastic. Well, our dashes that they made of plastic would literally just start falling off, you know, shortly after you bought them. Whereas the, the Japanese, they were made of plastic, but they'd stay up there. And they, they wouldn't be falling off and landing mm -hmm. in your lap. Of course they will win then. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, for Japanese cars, they have Toyota, they have Hyundai, mm. uh, Honda, sorry. And for American car, you have uh, Ford, you have Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. What other brands were still there back then? Well, even though they are not that good. 
Um, well, one of the better ones too was a Dodge Chrysler. Um, uh -huh. Dodge made some fantastic vehicles yeah. at that time. Um, the Dodge Charger, which has kind of come back in recent years in the mm -hmm. last decade or so, we've seen the rebirth of a Dodge Charger yeah. and things. Um, Plymouth uh, was a big company that was around that, that you know has merged and combined and things right. like that over time. There's Jeep. Um, Jeep is obviously still around. And during the 80s, this was the birth of the Humvee mm -hmm. um, and the Hummer, which was a military vehicle back then, but has made it into mainstream culture now and is not so much of a military vehicle. But that was mm -hmm. one of the big ones that was coming on the scene at that time. Was there a Mazda Town, town already? The... The, the kind of like a sports car? Uh, you know, the thing is, is during the 60s, there mm -hmm. was a lot of like great sports cars at that time. There was the Mustangs mm -hmm. and the nice Corvettes nice. and things like that, the pony cars mm -hmm. era. Um, but as we rolled into the 80s, they started winding those back. So they became more of a sedan type of car. They weren't sporty. They weren't racy. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, they were really ugly. Um, so it's almost a dead era um, you can't find cars like that. Whenever mm -hmm. you start looking for uh, classic cars, yeah. those cars just are skipped over. It's almost like the 80s didn't exist for, for those kind of oh, cars, okay. for your muscle cars. Mm -hmm. um, if you want like the, uh, you know, the, the Mustangs and the, the Trans Ams and the Camaros and things right. like that, you're looking before the 70s, mm -hmm. you know, or the 70s or before. You just skip the 80s and then you start jumping into the, the 2000s, your right. late 90s, 2000s. Right. Yeah. Nothing in between. Also. Nothing in between. That's like an era we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who did you admire back then? Um, I think you're working. Right. Um, to be honest with you, Bill Gates, of course, was mm -hmm. a big hero and he had his start in Albuquerque, which is, you know, my home state, New Mexico it is? there. Right, the first atomic bomb was actually in a place called the Trinity Site, which okay. is about 60 miles or so, 50 or 60 miles just north of my home. 